Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bhumika and if you don't know me, I'm an international student pursuing my PhD in US and I'm currently in my fourth year and on 23rd of July, I would start my fifth year as a PhD student, which is hopefully my last and final year. And for today's video, I want to talk about few, actually 10 uh, things that I've learned in my PhD and it's a very general things that I've learned. It's not very particular about the subject that I'm doing and I'm doing PhD in theoretical and computational chemistry. Um, so yeah, I thought this video would be helpful for people who are planning to join PhD or who want to do PhD and it would also be helpful for people who are or for students who are already pursuing PhD as you can relate to some of the things that I'm going to talk about. So I just thought it would be a fun video to do. So yeah, in this video, I'm going to talk about all the things I've learned in four years of my PhD journey. Okay, so starting with number one, for people who are planning to join PhD very, very soon, everyone would advise you to choose your supervisor very carefully, like your guide in PhD, um, very carefully. But I have a little bit different advice. Obviously, the advisor and the research is very, very important. But also what is important is to choose your lab mates very wisely so if you think like the professor is great and the research is good and the lab mates are somewhat tolerable you should join it but if you feel like you don't know the professor but the lab mates are terrible don't join the lab because you would be spending your next five years eight to nine mostly more than 10 hours of your day in that lab with those lab mates so they're going to be like your housemates more likely in my case, it's not that important because I work from home. I work on computer. I don't have to go into a proper physical lab and work. But for people who, whom I've seen working in a lab environment and if they have horrible lab mates or horrible relationship with their lab mates, they suffer a lot because you have to do everything together. You have to clean, you have to work together, you know, it's, it's a mess. So try having a good advisor, but try having a very nice lab environment where people are helpful, people care for you and they give you space and everything. So yeah, that's that's also very important and not, not a lot of people would think about it or take care of it. Um, number second is things will get complicated. PhD is supposed to be complicated. I've never heard or I've never seen anyone who have said, oh, my PhD was like a cakewalk it was so easy no everyone would go through hurdles everyone would have different complications everyone would be fighting their own demons sometimes it would be the results are bad sometimes it would be advisor giving you troubles sometimes it would be your own problems health issues anything can happen in phd and honestly just be mentally prepared for that um i had a good phd from the start but in exactly the midway of my PhD, um, my advisor passed away. I have made a video about it and it was a very, very low time for me. And I was just thinking, you know what, my PhD was going so good. I just published my first paper. I was publishing two other papers with him and then this happened. And then I suddenly realized that, yeah, this is PhD. It's not going to be an easy journey. You have to um, mentally prepare yourself. Th things would not go the way you plan it to be. It's not like a regular coursework. So just, just have trust in yourself and be mentally prepared that it's not going to be easy. Third point that I want to say is get all the admin stuff done as quickly as possible. So if your department requires you to take a bunch of coursework, if you have to give a seminar or you know those uh, those criteria that you have to follow to be a research candidate just do that as soon as possible so in my case we have to clear qualifiers we have to do cumes and we have to give a literature seminar and then we have to give a research exam that's what my department does so try giving it as soon as possible because then it's out of the way all the admin work is done and you can focus on your solely on your research for at least two or three years so getting that getting this out of the way is obviously good and sometimes it's not possible for some people but that's okay it totally depends on your scenario or your situation but try to get these things done as soon as you can number four is to have all of your literature um, in one place so try keeping in 
a soft copy and a hard copy by literature i mean if you're working on a project just try having all the papers that have been published all important papers of your interest in one place try to organize them nicely with like a year and a date or author however you want to but try to keep everything in one place because sometimes it and it has happened with me i read a paper online i didn't save it i thought oh yeah it's fine it's important i'll look into it later and then i had a discussion with my professor and he and we you know we were arguing on something and then I was like I've read that paper somewhere but I can't seem to remember who published it or when it was published and what they were talking about I just remember the results but I didn't remember the details so try having an organized um, folder try to have um, printouts as well but even if you don't have printouts just have a folder where you can save all your project papers or your literature papers safely and well organized Number five is so important. Always, always back up your data, no matter what. As soon as you find um, results, as soon as you start getting results, keep a backup on a cloud or on a hard drive or on your, just on, not on your computer, but somewhere keep a backup and start writing the draft. There is a reason why it's called a draft because it's supposed to be imperfect. Nobody has written a first draft perfectly. It goes through a multiple, multiple edits. So you have to make sure that you start writing your results as soon as you start getting your results. So writing is very, very important. And this is something I struggle with a lot. Every time I start a project, I make sure, I promise myself that, okay, as soon as I start getting something, I would start writing my draft and then I never do. And then when I have to start writing the actual draft, I just procrastinate and I'm like, I'm lost. I don't remember stuff. So yeah, try writing it as soon as you can. Number six, sadly, anxiety and depression are very common in this world. You would feel demotivated. You won't feel like working. You feel like, oh, what I'm doing. You would have imposter syndromes, everything under the roof you can experience. And honestly, I have. I've gone through days where I was just so non-motivated i would motivate myself to work every day and then i would have days when i would feel guilty of not working and then i'm working i'm over exhausting myself and then you know it's just like a continuous battle that you're battling with yourself your own dilemmas so just try um to talk to people try to talk to your supervisor your lab mates your family friends or even if you want, you can talk to uh, you can talk for help outside from a qualified counselor. They can help you deal with these kind of feelings, and it's very common um, to go through it. Every single person goes through it. If you see someone who is highly motivated all the time, it's not true. If you see me as being productive all the time, it's not true. I go through a lot of slumps. I go through a lot of, um, like, I have to motivate myself to work. I have to self-discipline myself to work every day. Um, one of the things that works for me is try setting goals for every single day. So even if that goal is to read one paper, even if that goal is to open your Word document and write five words, it's a goal and you can just achieve it in one day, in one hour. So try just doing something instead of just um, procrastinating and lying on the bed because trust me it won't help it would not help and yeah obviously taking days off is important as well so if you don't feel like working don't feel guilty just take few days off take a weekend off read whatever you want to do just do for yourself and then be ready mentally to get back so number eight is to read others research even if it's not related to what you are doing it's important for you to know what other people are doing in the world because it would give you ideas it would help you understand what kind of research is going on in the world other research groups are doing so yeah try to read other people's work try to attend conferences as many conferences as you can attend just try attending them start building contacts networking Every, all of these things would help you uh, stay prominent in, a, in the research world if that, if that is what you want for the future. So try doing all those things. Um, it helps immensely, something that I need to work on. But this is an advice that I've gotten from a lot of people who have graduated. So yeah, it, this is something we need to work on. Networking and reading other people's research. Very important. Number nine is to be creative and organized. So always write whatever you are doing. Try maintaining a lab notebook. I think in most cases people have lab, lab notebooks, 
but having one lab notebook which is dedicated to your research is so important right everything that you're doing every single day i have spoken about this a lot of times i have a lab notebook more like a lab journal because i don't do it like i don't do reactions i do chemical simulations so i still have everything on my um supercomputer but i still like to write down what i did in one day what i was working on so yeah just have like a lab notebook or a, or a lab journal it helps you a lot to organize your work and also when you're writing your thesis you kind of get a timeline of how much time it took you to do this and then how much time it took you to analyze the data and all those things so it's it's very helpful have a lab notebook Okay so the last point is to join writing programs I know when you when you hear about phd you think you oh you're working you're doing a lot of coursework you are uh, researching analyzing the data but what we don't understand is a very important aspect of phd is writing papers which is very important in this world that says publish or perish so you have to be very much in touch with your writing skills um there's grammarly there's a lot of other softwares that you can use but this is something i struggle a lot and i've been working constantly i think since last one 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 and a half years i've been working on my writing skills so try joining writing groups try joining uh, there are a lot of graduate seminars that tell you how to do literature survey how to write your introduction how to do referencing and all those things and the earlier you jump into this the better it would be like i know getting results is difficult but trust me writing that result is so damn difficult it's very very you know a writer's block is so important and if you have a good writing hand you will definitely succeed in your field whatever you're doing it's it's so important i cannot stress enough on how important this is um so yeah don't be afraid to make uh, mistakes in writing just start practicing it because writing is something that comes from practice so start practicing as much as you can okay so the last point number 10 that i want to discuss is don't be afraid to ask for help this is so important if you're stuck somewhere try doing it yourself but if you can't just go ask a senior ask a postdoc ask someone who is working in the same field or something similar to what you're doing ask your supervisor a lot of times advisors are waiting for you to come and ask for help but they don't want to you know give everything to you on a platter so you do have to go and ask them questions ask them how you're feeling stuck you're not able to solve it so yeah ask your supervisor and also keep your supervisor in loop a lot of people don't do that they go through a lot of troubles and they would try to solve them it takes them time but they never update their supervisor that they had this issue so try keeping your advisor in a loop obviously it depends on from lab to lab some advisors don't want to be in the loop they want you to do everything on your own it it really helps you to build a very healthy relationship with your advisor it makes them approachable it makes you approachable with them so it, you know it just makes a healthy relationship and it's something that you should be doing if you are a new phd or if you are a old phd student it depends on you so yeah that was all about it and this was everything that i've learned from others and from my own learnings in this phd uh journey and i still have one more year to go i don't know what what it would bring but i'm excited let's see how it goes so yeah this was the whole phd related video that i've been planning to film since a long long time and what better time than completing 4 years of phd wow feel so surreal to say this out loud but yeah one more year to go and let's see how it goes uh i hope you guys like the video please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys a lot of more phd related content coming your way soon in my final year because i'm going to write that damn thesis i have to write that dissertation i have to do a lot of stuff So yeah, I have a lot of exciting content planned. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.